If you had one wish, what would it be? Uh, that Belle didn't have a disease. A disease. So yeah. Do you think about that often? Mm-hmm. Like I always wish on a shooting star if I see it and I would beg. So yeah. Have you seen any shooting stars lately? Not really. We don't know how much time we have with Belle. We hope we have forever, but um, realistically we know that with her disease, um, the life expectancy is in the teens and she's already eight and a half. We just had her half birthday last week. Um, so that's, it's kind of heavy when, when these birthdays roll around. They're exciting because we love a birthday party, but it's a reminder that our time is limited. Tell me all about your sister, Belle. Well, my sister, Belle, has a rare disease called Sanfilippo syndrome, and that means she can't talk, and she's going to, like, she's got trouble of walking, and she's she got to um, lose how to swallow in a little bit, so yeah. And um, I love her so much because she's just, like, a different person of, like, like, anywhere she goes, she's different, and I love that, so yeah. What's it like to have a sister who has Sanfilippo syndrome? Well, it's like... Every time when we watch a movie, she might yell, but I don't really care because I love when she yells, and it's like the nicest thing to hear. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you love communicating with your sister? Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you do? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I feel like um, every time when I do, it's just really fun, and it's like my sister knows that I'm there if she like. She can't really hear well, my dad and mom think, so Mom's I try to yell as loud as I can yeah. to make sure I'm safe. What is San Filippo syndrome? Um, San Filippo syndrome is a lysomal storage disease. It's often referred to as childhood dementia because it's slowly taking away some of our child's cognitive ability and then eventually it does progress to the body as well with Bell's type. She has MPS3A. Um, which is a form of San Filippo syndrome. Yep. It, ca it causes all the cells in the body to eventually die off, and um, that's what leads to the cognitive Decline. and the physical declines in her body. I have this thing called anticipatory grief, where sometimes I'll get in my own head and all I can think about is the future and what's coming, and you know, you kind of think worst case too, like I picture how sick she'll be, and. Um, so I try to not do that. I mean, I literally just have to shake it off and say, okay, um, I've, had a, I've had a day where I've let myself be really sad and cry and upset, and, but now I need to get back to reality and take care of my girls and enjoy the moment. And I mean, it's hard, but you have to remind yourself that, you know, you've got to just keep living and enjoying and making those memories. And I mean, I'm crazy about pictures. I take pictures all the time of my girls and um, I like to, have them wear matching outfits like they are today. Um, I know Arden's eventually gonna grow out of that and won't let me dress her anymore, but for right now, I love when they're twins and wearing the same thing. I noticed that you and your sister have amazing ma matching dresses. Yeah. Do you like matching with Belle? Yes, it's well, my favorite thing to do is matching. <laughs> why do you like it? Because like, if, like, when I always wanna cut my hair like hers, and one time I did, and we were like matching twins, like and people couldn't tell the difference, but then when Belle yelled, then they could tell the difference, so I loved it when we were matching, but my hair grew longer, so we're kind of matching now, so that's why I like it. <laughs> you went from speaking so many words to one word, then to not being able to talk, and then at that point when we tried to get her to say words, you could see that she was trying to say it, but she just wasn't able to. She said she was frustrated, and it was just the saddest thing to see. I just felt so bad for her. So she shows frustration about the regression. Well, this was at that point, like around, I'd say about four, when she completely stopped talking, but she just couldn't talk. You could see it that she was trying to, but she would just get frustrated. And then once so she started regressing more and more, you know, then she, the frustration went away because she, you know, she didn't, the, the brain was just deteriorating. So she might not be processing the fact right. that she's regressing anymore. Oh right, she she was she was not processing that at all. In a kind of strange way, does that make it easier that she's not processing it anymore? It does. She doesn't know what's happening to her now, so it's you know it, you know it, it's like my father has Alzheimer's. He's aware of it. Um, so when he you know comes in and out, he I mean it's really sad to see yourself go, but she's she didn't have that. So in a way, it's. It's kind of a little bit of a relief that she doesn't have to go through that part of it. What is it like to be the grandmother of Belle and Arden? It's great. Um, 
sometimes it's I get very sad. La, I know it's going to happen to me. And I just get very sad when I think about it. And I think it's very unfair, but I get very emotional thinking about it. But um Yeah. Sorry. I know that your husband is diagnosed yeah. with Alzheimer's, yeah. and I know that they call it San Filippo yeah. Syndrome yeah. childhood yeah. dementia. Yeah. Yes. Can you tell me about the similarities and differences between Alzheimer's and San Filippo Syndrome? I'll do my best. Um, um, with Alzheimer's, at least he's lived his life, he's enjoyed his life, um, he's had a family, he's Love. Had a business, he's had grandchildren, marriage, he's, he's enjoyed his life, he's had a good life. Um, San Filippo, it just, like, I was shocked when she was talking. Ah! What? what is this? Um, Belle's not going to have the opportunity. To date anyone. To date anybody, to um, Ma! Ma! have experienced. Do you like holding hands with your sister? Yes, it makes like, I think that when I hold hands with her, she knows that um, like I'm there, I'm her, I love her and stuff, so yeah. What are some other things that you do to show your sister that you love her a lot? Um, other things I do to show my sister I love her, like when it's Christmas coming up, I always make her the best present in the world. Like, um, like I give her like a dress, headbands, and I make sure that she loves it, and like squishmallows and like all of those things. How does she react when she opens your awesome presents? She yells as loud as she can, then she starts playing with some. I had never heard of San Filippo Syndrome. I, in my worst fears, I couldn't have dreamed that my child would be affected with this type of disease. Neither one of us knew how to react. I remember for probably three or four days after she was diagnosed, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't leave the house. I just cried constantly. And I, every time I would wake up after I'd fallen asleep, I would think it was a dream, you know, like a horrible nightmare. Um, it's just something you can't prepare for. And then eventually, after a few days, I had to realize, like, she's here right now. So rather than laying in bed crying, which, you know, is easy to do, I had to get up and spend time with her because I wanted to enjoy and have all these memories with her. What's the best thing about having a sister? Uh, the best thing of having a sister is that I don't need to do stuff for myself and it's fun to do with stuff, so yeah. What is it like for you to see the bond between Belle and Arden? It was fun because at the beginning when she was doing well, you know, like three and she, nothing was really affecting her, they would do the normal sister things, you know, like, oh, give me that, oh, Belle, you know, they would do that together. But now that Belle's regressed so much, um, her sister is, you know, really looks out for her. And, she, she's become, I'd say, she was caring before, but she's more caring now for her sister. She understands that Belle can't do things on her own. Belle needs help, assistance for everything. And, and she's always, um, yeah, she's always there for her sister. Do you ever have any disagreements with your sister? Sometimes, like only three times. Like one time we were having a present for my, um, for my mom's birthday. I wanted to give her like, like, a, like a matching headband and or and my sister I said which hand do you want a headband or do you want matching something makeup and then my picture and then my sister put pointed to makeup so I'm like but I like that so we rock so I taught her again and I bit patient and then she chose makeup again so we did makeup for her I think that it's really great that you give your sister choices so she can communicate what she wants yeah how did you learn to do that well I learned it when I was like, when she, I knew that she had the San Felipe syndrome, because then like any time if she couldn't answer me and we have like something to do, I'll like make sure I have like something in my hands and I'll say, do you want this or do you like this? So yeah. Before, you know, when Belle was two, three years old, they were just best friends and they still are, but they, they could communicate, they could play together, they would dance together mm -hmm. all the time. All the time. All the time dancing. Oh, yeah. Hand clap, they love that song. I feel like we're so yeah. lucky that we have Arden to take care of Belle. 
and to help us with Belle. And it's made Arden such a compassionate little girl. I love me with her. Why? Because if I be with her. Because if I be with her, um, like, I can't really like take my eyes off of her beautiful hair, eyes and stuff. So yeah, and um, when I be with my sister, I love doing everything with her, and I love like helping her with other things and stuff. So yeah. Did your sister always make those fun, loud sounds, or is that something that happened as she grew up? Well, she never like made them when she was a baby and stuff, but when she grew up, she kept on getting louder and louder, and then we know what it means. If she's high, she's happy. If she's low, she's sad. So yeah. Arden comes to the doctor with us sometimes, if it's in the summer or if she's not in school, and um, she's seen or heard things, and then that's what's kind of triggered her asking questions. And she's still naive about a lot of it and optimistic about, you know, that her sister, no one wants to think that your sister's gonna pass away in a few years. Um, and I would rather Arden have hope. I wanna have hope. I want my whole family to have hope. I want everyone to have hope that a miracle happens. So we just keep hoping. <laughs> Is there something that was hard for you to understand about San Filippo syndrome? Well, there was something hard that I didn't understand when I was like a baby. My mom used to think that my sister will not die in a little, but then she, well, then, my, then the doctor says she might die even earlier, so I was kind of like confused that time. So yeah. Did your parents help you understand that? Mm-hmm. So now I know all about San Filippo syndrome, and I can help Belle more. What have you learned that is useful? Well, I learned like how to be patient a lot of things like that, and I learned how to be kind, nice, and if she gets like her, I know what to do. She has like the little basket that we take everywhere with her to have like all of her shoes and stuff, and it's really nice. I brought it for um, school one time, and I taught everyone what about my sister, so yeah. They love playing on the playground, mm -hmm. and the, um, Belle slowly became unable to climb up the ladder. And, and then almost the scared slide. to and go down the Arden, slide. Arden started, you know, that's when she really started asking questions about it. Like why, then, why Sissy didn't want to go yeah. on the playground anymore. We truthfully didn't tell Arden for a very long time because she was so young and I just wanted her to be a kid and enjoy life and not have the stress or the weight of knowing that her sister has this horrible rare disease that's taking her abilities away. Um, we kind of went back and forth about when to tell her and gradually Arden just started to ask a few questions. I still don't know Arden. Do you fully understand what's happening to Sissy? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we, we don't sugarcoat it, but we try to we try to be positive, I think. Right. So we are not going to focus on everything Belle's losing. We're going to focus on what she still has and the mm -hmm. fact that she's still here because every day with her. appreciate the moments more. The yeah, moments that is the it. only benefit of this disease is that I think we don't take a birthday for granted. We don't take a holiday for granted. Yeah, we do half birthdays. We celebrate half birthdays, <laughs> you know, any reason to celebrate. I'm always anticipating like her passing or just losing skills or just everything that can go wrong now, you know, and, and before I was not like that. Like I know a lot of my mom friends would say, oh, I'm so worried that my child's gonna get sick or that my child could be in a car accident if she's with someone or, I never really thought like that, which I guess I was lucky that I didn't. You know, I always just thought the best, like thought we were gonna have this great life and that, you know, Belle was going to <laughs> go to an Ivy League school and marry her dream, you know, husband or, you know, who, partner or whoever she wants to be with. Like I just, I just always, Thought positive. Does your sister go to school? Well, she used to, but then she didn't go to school when we when her disease got even better. So yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. So we didn't know it, but we're both carriers of this disease. So because we both carry it, we had a one in four chance of having a child um, that has this disease. So um, yeah. we didn't have any idea until after Belle was born even about San Filippo syndrome. So Arden is older, you had her and she was healthy, so you still had no clue. Right, right. no and, clue. And we had had genetic testing, but it's just not... To get fixed. pregnant yeah. with Arden. Yeah. One of the first things I noticed as her mom was she would forget things. Like I would be looking at her or we would be talking about something or you know reading her books and she would forget. And, and I remember telling the doctors that. So I, I think that was a sign, but 
But Jamie and some, you know, they were like, no, she didn't forget. Like, she's a little girl. She's learning. Can you tell me about the moment of the initial diagnosis when you first learned about San Filippo syndrome? We were driving to St. Pete for a doctor's appointment, and then the geneticist's office called us. And, um, you know, it was just a regular day, and then they said, uh, they told us it was San Filippo syndrome. And they appalled, and they, you know, said, we're very sorry that, you know, we had to give you this diagnosis. I mean, I think right off the bat when we were diagnosed, all my focus was on was that the doctors were wrong, we needed another test, we'll find another geneticist, we'll try another doctor's office. I mean, we, because I wanted them to be wrong. It was devastating at that point, and then, of course, you're always thinking you can find a cure, we can find something, so there's all these trials out there, we can hopefully get into one, and uh, everything will just get back to normal. So was there an initial diagnosis, and then a moment of you accepting the initial diagnosis? I still think sometimes I haven't fully accepted it because I'll look at Belle and I'll be like, they're wrong, she doesn't have this. She's not as sick, she's not, she's still walking, she's still eating, she's still talking, you know. Um, but then when you take a step back and look, I can clearly see my daughter does have this disease and they were right, the doctors were right. I know that children with San Filippo syndrome often have the same physical traits. Mm -hmm. Can you describe them? <laughs> She has very coarse hair. So, um, Belle's actually never had a haircut. I mean, we've trimmed it, but it just doesn't seem to grow much. Other children with her disease, their hair does grow a lot, but it's always the coarse yeah. texture. Um, she also has kind of thicker eyebrows. My husband is Greek, so I thought it was just that, but it's it's probably the San Filippo. So she's got some thicker eyebrows. What else, anything else? Oh, she has sharp teeth. That's kind of interesting, so. That's Shark cool. teeth? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, from, so she has two rows of teeth. From chewing constantly, her, her baby teeth have, are still very strong and they haven't they come out. They don't want to come out. Yeah. So they're, so she's literally got two rows of bottom teeth. What was it like for you when she was first diagnosed and you saw your family's reaction? Well, I got kind of scared when they were told me and like when she got diagnosed and stuff. And my Yaya was there still, so I hold her hand a lot. <laughs> Then I saw my mom crying, so then I'm like, what's happening? So, yeah. Did you try to guide her through that moment? Yes. Um, my way, I was very honest with Arden. Um, <laughs> she had a lot of questions. This is normal now, so I like, we, we have our routine. So if we feel that, that's like, what it, it makes it a lot easier, is having our routine in the morning. We wake up, I take Belle downstairs, because she can't walk down the stairs or anything, and we, you know, she watches her show, she eat, we feed her, and um, then you know, later on my in-laws come over, my mother does to take care of her, but it's consistent routine, and it kind of keeps the sanity, you know? <laughs> this, this first question is for you, Arden. Tell me all about your grandparents. This is my Mimi. I love someone with her and a lot of things, and she helps me cook stuff. Like <laughs> last night, we cooked cookies and other things like that. So it's fun. <laughs> it makes me feel really, really happy that Belle's like all loved by my friends, family. What's your favorite way to connect with Belle? I guess, like I said before, on the golf cart, she, she, you know, she, she never gets restless. You know, she just will sit there so calm and ride. Ride, ride, that looks. Looks at everything. Mm. Do you ever wonder what she's thinking? Often, often. And uh, no way of telling. You know, I wish I could look in her eyes and say, oh, you're thirsty now, or, or just little things like that. You know, oh, you want something to eat? And, you know, I, I nothing. I, I, I just guess at every little thing, you know, and, just, just trying to make her comfortable, best we can. Mm -hmm. Trying to make her. I love to give her kisses. She doesn't really kiss back. Although sometimes she has her little way of doing it. You know, she's funny. But she's not one of those kids that goes up and hugs everybody. And you know, we miss that about about her. She had that at one time. You know. What is your favorite memory with your sister? My favorite memory is her when we used to do dance together, and she used to always tap dance and stuff. And when I was always at a concert, I used to scream as loud as I can. So yeah, it was really fun. At the beginning, you know, the first three years when we didn't know anything and we were just, she she was just, you know, she, uh, she does now, but she'd light the room, she'd be able to talk, she could, you know, be with us and 
run around and play and it was just it's a great time but you take you know that time you know, this made it some things i did take for granted thinking that you know we're going to have you know she's going to get older and everything's just going to be a normal progression of life and you know maybe a I should have, uh, you know, paid attention a little more, done a little bit, you know, you always think about the stuff that, you, you know, oh, that one time I, I didn't hug you right away when I walked through the door or something like that. It always hangs with you now because, you know, I'll never get that back and then it's always, it's going to be um, just much different now. And, and, you know, the communication's not there, but, you know, she's still my little girl and we, and I love her to death. What did you think when you first learned about San Filippo syndrome? I, I just, I guess I just felt after you learn everything about it, just hopeless, you know, that it's just when they say there's no cure yet, hopefully they'll get one one day. Uh, but as of right now, you know, you just, you resign yourself to the fact that she's not going to get any better. So just try and make her life here now as good as you can. I think the toughest thing for me is knowing that I'm her mom and I just want to protect her and take care of her and I can't find a cure. I mean, right. we could raise all the money in the world and find the smartest doctor in the world, but it still wouldn't guarantee a cure for her. I mean, we have to go through testing and trials and everything just takes a long time, the process, the red tape, and we just need something now. What is the life expectancy for a child with San Filippo syndrome? Uh, well, with 3A, it's, a, it's about mid-teens, and it's, it's usually, um, from what I've seen, is, is it like it, they, with, the, with how the feeding tubes start happening, and because they can't feed themselves, and then asphyxiation, things, certain ways that, that these kids pass away, it's just, it's terrible, but uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, I can't even, I can't even think about that happening right now, but yeah, we've been trying very hard not to get to a feeding tube yet, um, we've been, giving her her milkshakes and her protein shakes, all that, you know, she's, she has to eat very small bites because she'll, she will choke and uh, she does silently aspirate a little bit. How does your sister show you that she loves you? Well, she might like hit me and stuff, but that means like maybe she wants to play and stuff and I think that maybe means that she loves me and she just wanna do stuff with me, so yeah. What's it like to have a sister who expresses her love by hitting you? Well, it's kind of fun, and it's like nice. Well, it might hurt, but maybe if it hurts, I could just play and do stuff with her even more, so yeah. When somebody hears about San Filippo syndrome, I think their first reaction is, what can we do to help? Mm -hmm. What can people do if they want to supply a helping hand to your family and other people impacted by San Filippo syndrome? We've partnered with, with the, the Cure, Cure San, San Filippo Foundation, um, and their main goal is to raise money for clinical trials. Um, there currently is no cure or treatment, no viable treatment option at all for this disease. So um, it's been around for a while, but because it's such a rare disease, um, pharmaceutical companies don't, you know, I mean, there's not other much money in it. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, it, it's not something right. that's on the top of everyone's priority list. So but um, with, but we try to fund, help fund the um, research and everything into finding a a solution for this mm -hmm. but um, and the clinical trials take a long time and they're very costly um, but that is the only way to eventually come to a, a way to help combat this disease is these clinical trials I'm going to include the link to cure San Filippo foundation so people can click on there and contribute okay to... we appreciate that very oh much. of course <laughs> I think it's the, the least I could do I think anybody who watches this would want to contribute to help end San Filippo syndrome mm -hmm. Yeah, because she's literally just missing an enzyme. So, I mean, there's got to be, in my head, I'm not a scientist, but I'm like, there's got to be a way to just get her the enzyme she's lacking. What is your biggest hope for Belle right now? A cure. <laughs> I mean, it's really simple. We just need a cure to save her. But if we don't have a cure or if one doesn't come in time for her, I just want her to have a happy life. I want her to have memories, even if she forgets them. They're memories that we also have. And, you know... Just, I want her to have time with her sister and her grandparents. All I want is a cure for any child with this disease. Like no child should suffer and not experience the joys of childhood. Um, I mean, any rare disease needs advocacy and it needs people to care about it. That's the only way we'll ever get a cure or a treatment. 
And if it's not in time for my daughter, it's okay. It's gonna help other children. Um, and I don't think any parent should go through this. So anything I can do to advocate or help research and development and clinical trials and a cure, I'll do. And even after Belle's not here, you'll see me, you know, advocating until I die <laughs> for rare diseases. What's the most important thing you want your sister to know? That I love her more than sugar pie, so yeah. And sugar pie is pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's really good, so yeah.